So hello and welcome to a live episode of the Seven Secrets to Next Level Freedom video series. So I'm Debbie Lichter. It's really good to be here with you today. And today we are on secret number three. So if you missed secret number one and secret number two, you can head on over to um, YouTube. You can catch those there or I will actually leave a link below in the comments with the first two secrets. So we are in this seven week series and it's such an honor to be here with you. And today's secret to next level freedom also happens to coincide with the secret to having more confidence and more inner trust. And this is a really, really big one that I find from a lot of the folks I have an opportunity to speak with. So I typically tend to talk to people who've already done a lot of inner work. I speak with a lot of high achievers, a lot of coaches, healers, um, you know, spiritual seekers, people who have just been on the path for a while and who are still struggling or holding back or still acting out with maybe some obsessions or addictions that are, you know, getting in the way of them just being authentically all of themselves and having the confidence to put themselves out there. And so today's tool, today's tips and insights and training is really designed to help you to have next level freedom from all of those things, right? There's next level freedom from whatever addictions or obsessions are holding you back. Maybe it's with food, maybe it's with alcohol, maybe it's just with obsession itself. And also having that next level freedom around your confidence to just be authentically you, to feel comfortable in your own skin, to put yourself out there, and to feel like it's okay for you to just be you, to just be you. And so if that's what you want, if that's what you're really into right now, then definitely stick around. I'm gonna give you some tools that you can use. And, and I'm also gonna share with you some of the things that get in the way. So here's what I found, just you know, in speaking with so many hundreds of folks over the last decade or so, I have heard consistently these themes of two primary areas where we tend to get blocked and we tend to hold back at our confidence or feel low confidence. So I'm going to go into those right now, but feel free to share in the comments where you find that you get blocked with confidence. What areas of your life do you feel like you get blocked or what do you think actually blocks you from having more confidence? That's the really important thing just to get some clarity around. So what I found is that the two major areas that really block people with their confidence, the first is overthinking. So overthinking, being up in your mind, trying to plan 50 million steps ahead, you know, trying to know how things are gonna work out, what it's gonna look like, seeing around the corner, um, you know, all that stuff, trying to think it all through, that can just immediately put us into low confidence and what it does is it takes us to a place of doubt. We get into self-doubt because as soon as we're up in our head and we are playing all the different scenarios, all the things that happen, all the things that could happen, all the ways that we might mess up or we might look stupid or we might get it wrong or we might not have anything valuable to say or or you know if you're lacking confidence just in your own choices around maybe what you're what you're eating you know then then we we doubt ourselves well i don't even know what to do i've made so many promises to myself that i haven't been able to keep and so you know what's the use i might as well just go and do whatever because i just can't figure this out and we're just in our heads all the time and what I find is that that just keeps us continually in our heads. So then they're just kind of like up in our heads all the time, obsessing and not feeling free. And that really, really hijacks us from the path of freedom, from the path of confidence, and certainly from the path of inner trust. So that's the first one is overthinking it. The second one is people pleasing or any variation on the theme. So people pleasing, not wanting to disappoint, any of those ways that we hold back because of other people. Um, you know, the, 
the obsession that we have around how other people might perceive us or what they might think about us or not wanting to disappoint them, not wanting to let others down, not wanting to look bad, um, you know, being really hard on ourselves when we think that we've done something that might have let others down or might make us look bad or might be disappointing to others. Um, this is a huge, huge, huge one because this is the way that we will literally come out of ourselves and completely start to like operate in the world. We're looking in the world, we're saying, okay, what do you need me to do and be for me, for you to like me? How do I need to be for you to like me? What do I need to do so that I please you, so that you think good things about me, so that I can get the love, attention, accolades, validation, understanding, you know, whatever it is that I perceive that I need in that moment. Um, and what that does is it puts us in a place of dependence. So this is an interesting thing because when I talk about dependence, I'm usually also talking to people who have a history of not being able to depend on others, feeling like they have to do everything on their own, pull themselves up by their bootstraps, that you know it's not safe to depend on others or rely on others because they're just gonna let you down. And so we have kind of like conflicting things going on. Oftentimes we don't wanna ask for help, we don't wanna depend on others because we think they're just gonna let us down and we don't wanna be let down again and so we just kinda of try to do everything on our own but at the same time, there's this part of us that holds back because we also don't want to disappoint. We also don't want to look bad. We also don't want to let others down. And so we're kind of playing it from both angles. And all of that contributes to us feeling lack of confidence, lack of inner trust, and certainly completely blocks our ability to have that next level of freedom. And so we're looking at two areas that create a ton of doubt and that create a ton of dependence. And as long as we have those, those going on, it's really, really holding us back. And when we're in a place of doubt and dependence, what I refer to it as is being caught up in the external feedback loop because we are, we're not in our bodies at all. We're not connected inside of ourselves. We're just in this like response, pattern with other people, we're up in our head, what do people need us to be, how do we need to be, what does it need to look like, are we going to mess up, and we're just nowhere connected inside of ourselves. So how, how do we change all of that? How do we shift all of that? What is the secret to next level freedom? Well, the secret to next level freedom here is like a part two to my first video of secret one of, of next level freedom, which is all about getting into your body, because there is this aspect that we are also talking about here about connecting and getting into your body. But here today specifically, we're talking about going from that external or mental focus that's keeping us outside of ourselves and into our inner guidance system, and the way that we do that is to trust our gut. So secret number three is to trust your gut. Trust your gut. So I know I can say that, and you might say, oh yeah, well that's great, <laughs> trust my gut, wonderful. Well, how exactly do I do that? Because most of us have a pretty antagonistic relationship with our guts. And so, you know, maybe you feel like your gut is something that has betrayed you. Maybe you don't trust it let down by it or maybe you're just completely disconnected from it and you just judge it so much that you don't even really want to hear what it has to say. So, or maybe it, it, it feels so sore and so uncomfortable that you actually try to ignore it. So that's what I find when I speak with a lot of people. They're usually having some kind of disconnection or some kind of issue, some kind of antagonistic relationship with their gut. And, and that's where I love to work with people one-on-one -on -one because that actually I can support you in not only completely shifting your relationship with your gut, but actually coming to a place where you can trust your gut, where you can rely upon the guidance that you're getting from your own gut instinct. And so what I'd like to do right now, hi Eva and Julie, so wonderful to have you join us here live today. Um, again, would love for anybody listening to this on the recording 
recording or listening to this live to just share what you feel like is the big thing that gets in the way for you when it comes to having that next level of confidence. And, and so as we really look at, okay, well, how, how do we do that? There's, there's ways that we, we, I like to address it uh, physiologically. So there's definitely uh, ways that we can connect with our gut physio physiologically. Let me just also share with you, your gut is, it's not just this thing that you're trying to get flatter and skinnier and make more toned and, you know, control and make smaller and all this kind of stuff. Your gut is actually the location of the second brain in your body. There's, there's a system that you have, it's called your enteric nervous system. It's part of your nervous system and it's actually considered the second brain of your body. And so, and it can actually operate independently of your brain in your head. So we really do have these two very separate but connected, inextricably linked areas and loci of awareness, of intelligence. And so the more we can actually connect in with this part of our bodies, the more we can cultivate a not just a friendship but an actual embodiment of this area of our bodies, it will lead to so much more confidence and inner trust because here's the thing is that your enteric nervous system, it's responsible for many, many things. One of those many, many things is actually that it produces like 90% of the serotonin in your body. So it's actually a major, it, it determines your mood. It actually sends the signal to your brain about mood stuff more than your brain is saying the signal to your belly. Just so you know, that's just kind of like one thing here. But, but what it's also doing is, um, it's, it's letting you know when something feels safe, it's letting you know when something feels dangerous, it's letting you know when something is a yes or a no. And so one of the super awesome ninja ways that I love to train people to really, really connect in with themselves is to, to start to cultivate this really nuanced awareness of what your gut is telling you when it comes to yeses and nos. And there's a very, very specific way that your body communicates that stuff to you. So um, I, I, in a moment, can go into a little bit more detail around that. Um, hey, Marlene, good to see you. I'm so glad that you're able to join us here. Yeah, thank you so much. I love you, too. Ah, I love you so much, Julie. So um, here's the other piece of it, too, is that when we're talking about trusting your gut, we also need to connect that gut instinct to your own intuition and to divine inspiration. So there's a way that we're actually, we're connecting your body with your heart and your mind and divine inspiration and bringing that all into a congruent relationship. And that is so, so key because when we're really looking at ultimately what it takes to have that next level of freedom, we can start with that access point of trusting your gut. But what I found is that you're able to lean into, to fully rely on and depend on your own inner guidance system when you're fully connected to that gut instinct, to your sixth sense intuition, and to the divine inspiration that is coming through you. And when you are not blocked from any of those sources of wisdom and guidance and direction, it's like you have this trifecta of inner trust that's going on all the time. And for anything, you feel like you have this intuitive sense or you have this gut sense or you have this guidance about what you need to do. And sometimes the guidance is don't do anything right now. I don't have all the information I need. I'm going to not do anything. But sometimes that's actually the most profound thing is to not act to not be impulsive, to not obsess and think that you have to figure it out, but to be patient and to trust that the right answer is going to come to you at the perfect time in exactly the way that you need it to support you in that next action. So there you have it today. The secret number three is to trust your gut. And I'll give you a quick tool that can support you around this. And of course, you know, those of you who are coming to my Freedom Embodied Live event, we're gonna be going way deeper into these things. As, as you know, if you haven't gotten your ticket, I will leave a link in the comment section. We still have some early bird tickets left. I would absolutely love for you to be there. And in the meantime, I'd love to just support you with this. So one of the things, you know, you, you, there's a million tools out there. People talk about muscle testing and they talk about, 
some friends over earlier this this week. Um, uh, it says, you know, I, I also so we did this online jewelry party and the people who were putting it on uh, actually came to my house and so we had this really fun thing happening and it was very cool and they both had pendulums so every single stone or style that I was recommending for one of the women on this um, online jewelry party um, they were doing they were testing it with their pendulums to see if that was something that was it was funny being tested um, I was on by the way but um, but uh, you know, like there's many, many ways that people use to try and calibrate what that inner trust is. But what I found is that we, our own physiology is communicating with us at all times when it comes to what is a congruent, aligned, authentic yes for us and what's a, what's a no, what's a no. So, I mean, my, my body personally will actually say, mm -mm. like I, like I'll actually make a sound that it's, 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 it happens before I'm even consciously aware of it. I'll just like si silently inside myself, it'll be like, a, mm -mm, no. And so I just kind of know that. But a way that I like to support others with, if that's not like a nuanced way that your body communicates with you quite yet, is to do the, um, the swallow test. So you can just join me with this. So I'd like for you to in your own mind's eye, say your name, say, my name is, so my name is Eva, my name is Julia, my name is Marlene, my name, my name is Debbie, and, and inhale that, as you say that, inhale that, and imagine yourself swallowing that down, like just ingest that statement, and just notice how that feels in your system, and notice how far down it goes, just that statement. Notice how far down it goes into your system. Just notice that sensation. And now, make up another name. So, my name is Jane. I don't know. Make up another name. And, and say that to yourself. And then try to swallow that down. And just notice what happens. <coughs> yeah, see, that's another thing that my body will do is it'll start to cough. So just notice how that feels. Notice what happened there. And I'm really, really curious if you felt like there was, it was like, it was hard to get that down. It was hard to kind of, your body was like, mm -mm, no, that, mm -mm, that's not true. And I almost like wanted to like push it back out. I would love to hear if that happened for you. So if that did happen for you, um, please just post, post a comment and, um, Post a comment and just say like, you know, post a comment what, what, what happened or you can just say yes slash no, that you actually got the experience of what happens in your body when you are bringing in a something that's a yes and when you're bringing in something that's a no and it actually just resists it. And this is a really subtle, but you can actually strengthen this muscle of awareness and really develop such a nuanced sensation that will allow you to gauge that yes or that no. So that's, that, that's a really fabulous tool that you can interact with your own physiology, you can interact with your own sensation to cultivate that deeper level of confidence. And again, ultimately, what I found really, really put me on that path of next level freedom and confidence is when I got free of the, the, that, that external feedback loop, that, that that dependence that I had on others, the way that I was just leaking and hemorrhaging so much of my energy and power, um, trying to get other people to see me, validate me, understand me, um, and to try to impress them so that I could feel like I was worthy and valuable. I mean, like when I got free of that whole pattern, and when I got free of that overthinking and that constantly thinking five steps ahead and being up in my head, when I got free of that and I was able to fully become embodied, it was amazing how my next level of freedom and my next level of confidence and inner trust just absolutely skyrocketed. And that's, again, why I get so passionate about 
having these live events like Freedom Embodied Live because I know how powerful it is when we can get in a room and we can activate that kind of freedom together. It's, it's just like, it's next level. We all walk away having a new level of freedom and a new higher frequency and just feeling more connected and confident in our own lives. So thank you again. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, everybody who joined live today. And um, for those of you who caught the recording, I am excited that you got a chance to, to watch that too. Please feel free to uh, pay attention to the comments section. Um, I would love to hear your own comments about what your biggest takeaway was and where you have been challenged with your own confidence. And if that tool, if that tip supported you in um, being able to gauge a little bit of that yes and no. I would love to hear that as well. And I will leave a link um, in the comments both for the secret number one to next level freedom and secret number two to next level freedom as well as the link to the Freedom Embodied Live event. That's in San Diego, November 3rd and 4th. It would be amazing to see you live. Thank you again for connecting here and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mwah.